Germany in 1913 is a society in crisis in a lot of ways. It's a society in crisis because it's undergone very rapid industrialization. In the mid-19th century, um, Germany would still have looked as being one of the least industrialized countries in Europe, behind Britain. By 1914, it looks in some respects as one of the most industrialized countries in Europe. Friday, October 17th, 1913. In Johannesthal, Germany, Zeppelin L2 is preparing to take off. It is the pride of the Navy fleet, and today representatives of the German Air Command are on board for a test run. The development of the Zeppelin airship contributed to the fears of Germany's neighbors. Whereas the Zeppelin aroused fears uh, among the British, it certainly excited the enthusiasm of the German people. Before the First World War, aircraft were not capable of flying long distances. Now, airships, it was thought, because of their size and long range, were more capable of carrying passengers for long distances. Now, the L-2 was a naval airship. It would have been used by the German Navy for long-range reconnaissance, sort of flying in front of the fleet, warning it of danger, the previous ones had the triangular keel, a structural member, inverted V, mounted underneath the hull of the airship that went from back to front, or front to back. It was decided to put the keel inside the hull in the case of the L2. The decision was made by the naval designer that worked on the airship. That was quite new for Zeppelin. They had never done that before. Like most airships of the period, the L-2 is equipped with cells filled with hydrogen, a gas that can be extremely explosive. Hydrogen was the only gas available at the time that could lift an airship, and it was believed that the risk was manageable. The same thing if you look at an airplane today, fuel is extremely flammable. Gasoline in a car is extremely flammable. It doesn't prevent people from driving cars. The huge airship lifts off for the final test run of the day. It is just 200 meters off the ground when disaster strikes. On the final flight, some flames were seen at the forward engine nacelle. Basically, the entire ship caught fire very quickly. Now, having lost its gas, there was no place for it to go but down. It's possible that the internal keel served as a passageway for hydrogen that had spilled out from the gas cells. The L2 was designed with engine nacelles that were closer to the hull than previous designs. And once the gas caught fire, it simply went and went back into the gas cells. All 28 passengers are killed, including the ship's technical designer. It is the final chapter to one black week in October that witnesses disaster by land, sea, and air. The tragic cost, over 550 lives in just eight days, and thousands more whose lives are never the same. The crash of the L2 is the 10th Zeppelin disaster. It's uh, not untypical. Uh, and it's also, of course, um, a harbinger of things to come.